So briefly, the Brandon Solutions grew out of an executive order that I signed in 2000, long time ago, uh, that created the Brandon Sustainability Work Group. And then the next year, we passed the Brandon Sustainability Act. Uh, and that included uh, Oregon Solutions, which was initially housed uh, in the governor's office and, and then migrated over to uh, the National Policy Consensus Center in, in 2002. Um, so the National Policy Consensus Center, in turn, grew, grew out of what was called the Policy Consensus Initiative, which was a national effort that was funded by the Hewlett Foundation. Uh, and uh, it was uh, had a board of directors that was made up of governors legislators from across the country, and the idea was to try to develop uh, collaborative uh, governance structures uh, uh, at, at, at the state level. And so that's actually where the concept of, of collaborative governance first emerged out of the PCI uh, two decades ago. For a while, I was co-chair of the PCI, along with Governor Jim Garinger from uh, Wyoming, and um, we were looking for a bricks and mortar academic home to do sort of cutting edge research, applied uh, research and development on, on consensus building and new collaborative problem solving. And I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. We were looking to steer this to Polk State a University um, in the uh, College of Public Affairs. So that's, that's sort of how we all got here. But I want to take a moment and look at it because collaborative governance uh, was developed to create uh, a neutral uh, form of consensus building. I want to emphasize the word neutral. I think that's so important. And what it tries to do is connect practitioners, like those of you here in the room, to support elected and community leaders who are trying to take on some of the more complicated and controversial issues that confront us today. And following the principles and practices of this collaborative governance framework ensures that all the stakeholders will have a safe place where they can express themselves as part of the process to reach a solution. Uh, the framework was adopted by the uh, PCI Board of Directors because it was designed to support the leaders. Uh, when they uh, bring us together to solve, to solve problems. Um, to me, that's what collaborative governance is. It's, it's a neutral demeanor and its practitioners <coughs> understand the mediation process all brought together uh, at the central location. So that was the premise of, of PCI. I don't know how you've evolved since then, but I do want to say that, you know, as practitioners, you don't generally serve as conveners, but you are the glue, you're the magic sauce that actually Next, it can be in all people who need to be uh, to find a solution that works for everybody. And the reason that I was involved in developing uh, the Oregon um, Solutions and uh, the National Policy Consensus there was not to create a facilitation service for Shadavis. Uh, it was to uh, create a new form of democratic leadership. It's not to say that you know, state agencies are great, people who work in them are great, but they're not the best conveners for the simple point of the fact that they are biased. Uh, because it represents an agency that's focused on a particular issue. Um, so you have the ability to help make this happen, I think, by, by, by the work that you do. And I think today what we need more than anything else is a, is a very inclusive process uh, that has uh, in it all the people who are touched in large or small ways, and that they feel a sense of shared, shared state in the problem, but more importantly, a sense of ownership so if you're a Democrat, um, you might be comforted by the fact that your party still controls the Oregon legislature and the executive branch, albeit with much narrower margins than the governor was elected with less than 50 percent. If you're a Republican, you may be comforted by the fact that you know your party is going to get back the U.S. House of Representatives again in an election cycle that leads to cowering levels of nastiness and negativity. So if you are an alien, uh, observing this biennial ritual of the American life process, you might come to the conclusion that the fate of the nation and the fate of the planet depends solely on which parties in control the government. Now, you may feel that way, but it reminds me of one of my favorite passages from Thomas Pinchon's novel, Gravity's Rainbow. If they can get you asking your own questions, they don't have to worry about the answers. The question isn't which party controls the government. The question is how we build a broad and enduring consensus to get at the root causes of the problems that we face as a state and nation, regardless of which party is going to be. My recognition that we needed a new governance model started in 1994, which was the year that I was first elected governor, which was also the year that the National Fisheries Service gave notice that they were possibly going to list 
uh, the Coho salmon uh, on, on the endangered species, species. Now, I was living in, in Douglas County at the time, and I, we had just gone through the listing of the Rhodes Water Alley. It was tremendously disruptive economically uh, for many parts of the world of Oregon. And I didn't think that, that, uh, that we could survive you know, another natural resource war in the state. Uh, and so um, we uh, set about uh, what was called then the Oregon Plan of Santa Washington, which was this massive community. It was a statewide collaborative that involved state and federal local agencies, that involved environmentalists, ranchers, farmers, the timber industry, and local citizens, in an effort to improve habitat of the coastal uh, most of which was on, on, on private land. And the key element of implementation was called the local watershed council. <clears throat> the watershed councils create a space where people who often disagree can come together and come across and try to do something positive uh, for a shared place, right? And the, the beautiful thing, the magic of those watershed councils is that not only did they improve water quality, but they built community. It, it engaged people in a different way. People realized that they do have something in common. The problem is the politics of blame have largely overtaken and defined our current political uh, system today, which makes it almost impossible for that system uh, to uh, address the root causes uh, of the conflict that's unraveled in the of our society. And that should be compared to anybody who endured uh, the relentless ads to the run uh, of this election. They really weren't about the future. They were about criticizing and blaming our problems on the They would get you asking the wrong questions, they don't have to worry about the answers. The question isn't who we should blame for the circumstances we face. The question is how we get beyond it. The question is how we build a community of conflict. And that's where you come in. Because I think the structures and the processes uh, that you are involved in are incredibly important in service of the world. Because you can create spaces outside the formal political process and engage multiple different stakeholders in a way that builds collaboration and trust and rebuilds community. So I guess what I'd like to suggest you think about is how we can take that framework of collaboration and then apply it to a few well-selected, uh, uh, multifaceted, cross-cutting issues uh, and uh, problems to see if we can bring together over millions for every walk of life all parts of the state in common cause to solve some really big problems that, that affect all of us. I think we can do that. In fact, I know we can do it because we've done it before. Thank you very much.